Hi. I'm going to wait a second because... Okay. I think we're live. So I'm going to jump right in. I know that there may not be tons of people that join the live feed, um, but maybe some of you are watching the replay. So that'll be just fine. Okay. My name is Edie Ann. I am a superstar director. I've been with Sensi since December of 2010. Um, so I'm going on my 11th year. Um, thrilled to be part of this community um, of Sensi. And I would venture to guess that since you are all in this group and you're wanting um, to be directors and maintain your directorship, um, that you are excited to be part of this company too. Hi, everyone. So definitely say hi as you're jumping on. Um, <laughs> Vanessa, I might have told you what I was going to talk about and then I changed my mind. So hopefully that's okay. <laughs> um, and the reason I changed my mind is because, well, let's, let's start here. So first of all, you all are in an amazing space. And some of you are saying, but Edie, we're in the queue. And that doesn't seem like a really amazing space. It is. Why? Because you have room for growth. And when you have room for growth, you have room to expand. And you have room to expand, your business can only get bigger and better, right? So when you look at the situation in that respect, you have a different mindset. Now, I do not know what everybody has talked about in this group. I don't know what the other leaders have shared with you in regards to systems or in regards to partying online, um, booking parties, recruiting people. I don't know what everybody has talked about. Um, and if somebody has spoken about the topic I want to speak about today, that's brilliant. And the reason is because the more we hear about something, the more that it's ingrained in our brain, the likely it's going to fulfill itself in our lives and to show up in our lives, okay? There's something called the reticular activating system. If you know what the reticular activating system is, go ahead, raise your hand, let me know. Um, I, hi everyone. Okay, so I'm kind of reading the comments. I have a little bit of a squirrel syndrome sometimes. So, you know, we're going to look at the comments and then we're going to talk. And I don't even know how long I have to talk today. So, um, the reticular activating system, RAS or RAS, as some scientists call it, is an actual function that our brain does. It's our unconscious mind, our subconscious mind, whatever you, term you want to use, unconscious, subconscious. Um, and I'm going to give you an example of when it's in full effect. You go to the car dealership. And at the car dealership, you have this array of cars that you're looking at, and they're beautiful, gorgeous, right? Can't wait to get your hands on one of those steering wheels and drive off the lot. You got the money. You got the loan. I don't care how it works out, but you're getting the car. Okay, and then this beautiful yellow, canary yellow sports car comes out of the bay because it's just been washed and it just got on the lot and you say, that one's mine. So you buy this yellow, canary yellow, beautiful car and you're thinking, oh, look at me shining. I am just Amazing, I've got this wonderful car. People are gonna love it. They're gonna comment about it. Matter of fact, it's the same color as this folder. Reticular activating system. You drive off the lot and you're driving home. Wow, there's that same yellow. Huh. They have the same yellow car. Oh, that folder's that same yellow. 
that Lysol can, same yellow. Huh. So now all of a sudden, you're seeing these things that are canary yellow and you've never noticed that color before. Never, right? But something was put into your head and you had an emotion that was surrounded from it, right? The excitement of getting a new car and you're getting to drive off the line. You can feel your hands on the steering wheel and you're driving. And this yellow car becomes embedded in you, embedded in you, embedded, embedded into your mind, into your unconscious mind. And so now all of a sudden you see this canary yellow everywhere. Have you ever had that happen? Where all of a sudden you're thinking about something and you see it everywhere. That, folks, is your reticular activating system and it is a real thing in our head, okay? It has been scientifically proven that the reticular activating system is a system in your brain function. Interesting, huh? That's pretty interesting stuff. So, knowing that information can be fairly powerful. You ever heard the term, what you think about comes about? It's based on the reticular activating system. Um, it's, you know, when you're, when you're concentrating on a particular thing, and you set emotion to it, it's almost like putting it into cement, right? So when you're thinking about something and you add an emotion, whether it's fear or happiness or sadness or grief, right? That thing that you're thinking about becomes embedded in your head. And so not only will you start to see those types of things around you, right? Um, it's the things that you're going to live out or bring out into your life. Okay. So with that knowledge, hi everyone. With that knowledge, um, I, I want you to really hone in on something. So at the beginning, I said that you're in a great position when you're in the queue, right? Because you have room to grow. You got room to grow. You got room to expand. You got room to better your business. And so when you focus on those things and all of these wonderful videos that these people have been doing for you in this group, incredible by the way, are things to focus on. Why do you think we create training? Why do you think we create these groups so that we have something to focus on, to learn the things that we need to learn? to embed the thoughts that we need to have to grow our business, right? So mindset has to be the first thing that you do when you want to change. Because I'm here to tell you, it ain't gonna matter how you do it. It ain't gonna matter why you do it. It's going to matter that you do it, right? Mary Christian said, said that it doesn't matter how it's the fact that you do it. So in order for all of those things to happen, what do you have to have? You've got to have your mind, right? You've got to have your mind set around that goal. You've got to have your mind set around the outcome that you want. Why do you think they call it mindset? right? Keep your eye on the ball. That's another one that we hear all the time, right? And that's because our focus needs to be line drived on what it is that we want. And when you start to look over here or you start to look over somebody else's fence or you start to look over into somebody else's yard, you lose focus on that ball. It's going to hit you right in the head, right? Super important to get your mind set 
right. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, you got to stay positive. You got to make all the right decisions. Guts to be this. Mindset doesn't mean happy. <laughs> Positivity doesn't mean happy. It means that you are focusing on the things that will have the outcome of your desire. Mindset is focus on the things that will have the outcome you desire. right? You want to get out of the queue, then don't focus on the queue. <laughs> right? You want to be a director, then act like one, be like one, and continue to do the things every single day that put you in director in the first place. What is that? I would say that Three main things. You're doing your job so that you can lead by example. You're recruiting new people that can watch you lead by example. And you're teaching your team to also lead by example and to do those same things, basically, right? Do your business to lead by example. Recruit people so that they can see you lead by example and teach them to do the same thing. kind of seems simple because it kind of is but when we lose focus and we become well see here's here's what happens we lose focus and we become overwhelmed and when you become overwhelmed it's just so much easier sometimes to just step away what happens when you step away you're no longer leading by example your team no longer does the things that you're doing or maybe they are if you've stepped away, guess what? They step away. Okay. Mindset needs to be the focal point of what you want your outcome to be. Okay. So for instance, don't think about what you don't want. Think about what you do want. You've heard that before. You want to get out of the right. If you want to get out of the queue, don't focus on the queue, right? So if you are mind, okay, let me, let me put it to you this way. There is something called right thought process, right verbiage, right words. When you are talking to your unconscious mind, our unconscious, and this again, scientifically proven, okay? Edie's not just talking out of her, who, whatever. She is speaking based on factual scientific proof, okay? You are, I totally just lost my train of thought. There's that squirrel. Let's go find the squirrel. <laughs> um, if you step away, they step away. Yes. Okay, hold on. Um. Oh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Your unconscious mind. Our unconscious mind believes every single thing we tell it. I want you to hear that again. Our unconscious, or I'm going to call it subconscious. And the reason is because unconscious means that you're kind of not thinking about it. Subconscious means it's the sub part of where you are conscious. Okay, so if your subconscious mind believes every single thing that you tell it in your conscious mind, because it's the sub of your conscience, right? Don't you want to tell it things that feel good or that will motivate you or that will move you forward or that will allow you to grow rather than to become stagnant? I want you to listen to that again. Your unconscious mind believes everything you tell it. So you better tell it something good. Okay. So like I said earlier, if you want to be out of the queue, then don't focus on the queue. If you are struggling 
with recruiting, don't focus on the struggle. Because if I tell my subconscious mind, Edie, you stink at recruiting. Like you are struggling. Like this is legit a hard thing for you to do. You're, my my subconscious mind is back here saying, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. You are. You don't, you're not very good at recruiting. You're having a hard time. Yeah, we should step away from that. Yep. Right? Subconscious mind is a super supporter. Because it's going to believe and re... Um, it's going to solidify anything that you tell it. You've heard people talk about affirmations before. That's why. When I was a director, every morning I would wake up before my feet would hit the ground and say, I am a superstar director. Might not feel it right now, but I am a superstar director. And if my little subconscious mind was like, but you're not. I always responded and said, but it's possible. So shush, shush, it's possible. I'm a superstar director. No, you're not. It's possible. Shush, 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 right? And eventually, guess what? I got here. Our mind is such a powerful thing that even if you lined up the best training that you could possibly get, the best systems that you could possibly have and you didn't tell your mind, your subconscious mind, that you were good at learning or that you were good at implementing learning that you got or that you were going to succeed with this learning that you got, it'd be like, teaching you till you're blue in the face and not doing anything with it because you were second guessing yourself. That is why affirmations are so, and you know, a lot of people are like, I don't like selling affirmations because they just sound like I'm lying and I don't feel good about it. That's why I always follow up. Cause I always said that I'm like, I, mm, okay, I'm not a millionaire. No, nope, not a millionaire, but it's possible. Like, feel the energy shift. And when you have energy or emotion attached to a thought, oh, so powerful. The fruition of that thought, when it's tied to an emotion, just sets it into like this overdrive of, yeah, okay, let's do it. It's happening. Right? It's happening. I think if I want one thing to be um, ingested, that's not the word, word. internalized. <laughs> if there was one thing that I want to internal, have you guys internalize today is that the thoughts that you have, have a lot of power over you. So if that's true, which it is, I think it's time to make sure that those thoughts are in a direction that you want to go and that they are attached with good emotion, positive, motivating, loving, happy emotion. Are we gonna have fear? Are we gonna have doubt? Are we gonna have sadness at times? Absolutely. But if you have the ability to know that those three things might have come on naturally, but that your thought process attached to emotion has the ability to shift any of that, you're not going to sit there very long. You're not going to sit there very long, right? If you don't want to be in the queue, don't focus on the queue. The problem is only the problem because we're thinking about the problem. Let me say that again. The problem is only the problem because we're thinking about the problem. If you don't want to be in the queue, don't think about the queue. Think about being a director. Act like a director. Talk like a director. Do the things that you need to do to have gotten you to director in the first place. If you don't have enough team members, get more. If you don't have enough team that's motivated to do what they need to do so that you can maintain director numbers, get new ones. Is it going to take time? Yeah. Took time for you to get there in the first place. 
If you're having to redo it because your team lost their motivation, then it's going to take time for you to be, rebuild it. And it's okay. It's okay to rebuild, right? I'm going to leave you with one analogy that I've used a lot in the past. And it's my... Please hold. Sorry. Um, it's called my house analogy. And the house analogy is based on the... And, and I want you to use this as a director. Knowing that you are a director, um, I want you to use this knowledge to know that where you're at is perfectly fine. So in the house analogy... Um, when the carpenters come, they are going to build the foundation. The foundation is going to be pretty strong. Um, it's going to maintain a lot of weight, right? Because the house is going to be on it. But over time, what happens to the foundation? There's cracks that build up. There's little nicks that go on the concrete. Um, and so water can seep down in, right? Um, in comparison to your team, the foundation is built by all of those consultants that start, that start, that buy a kit and they start. The cracks get built when people are falling through and falling out, okay? So you kind of have to keep filling those cracks, right? So you got to keep recruiting. If you don't re keep recruiting, what's going to happen? Those cracks are going to get bigger and eventually your foundation is going to crumble, right? So it is important for us as leaders to continue recruiting to keep that foundation solid because also not only are the cracks going to form because people are falling through and falling out, you're going to have people that actually start climbing the walls. Lead consultants, star consultants, superstar consultants, and then directors, right? So as they're coming out of that foundation, can't forget about the foundation. Got to keep recruiting. Got to keep filling that foundation. That is a never ending conversation that has to happen in your business. Recruiting has got to be one of the number one things that you do to continue to build your business. You're going to get people that just don't have it in them like you do. You're going to get people who don't get it. You're going to have people that just want to be kidnappers. And those are okay. You need a ton of them to maintain that foundation. You need people, a lot of people, that are going to just do the $200 every four, well, what is it now? I don't even know what it is, but it used to be every four months. You need a lot of them. You need a lot of those people. And then out of them, some will come up. Does that make sense? Um, I really hope um, and I have absolutely no doubt that you are all going to come out of the queue. Why? Because you're here. You're wanting it. You're wanting to come out of the queue. And so you're focusing on the outcome, on what you're wanting. And you need to continue to do that so that you can get out of the queue. If you don't want to be in the queue, don't think about it. Do the things that directors do. Do what got you to director in the first place. I hope you found some golden nuggets in this. Um, if you ever have any questions, please reach out to me at any time. Uh, Vanessa, thank you so much for inviting me to, to speak with all of you guys today. What an honor. What an honor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll see you all later. Bye.